Hi, so since publishing the video on the GE Tellaria light valve, I had an email from someone that had access to some of the uh, industry papers and found a fascinating one that gives a very good description of how the colour system works. From the name on that I then dug through and found a few patents. I'll link all the patents down below. I can't link to the original port because it's behind a paywall but I'll summarise a few of the uh, interesting things because it's a lot easier to read than the patents. So this is a drawing from the uh, one of the patents which is clearly the same device and all the details are yeah, basically exactly the same. There's another drawing here which shows most of the uh, parts of the system and the basic principle was you know we, we saw that in that light valve it was almost deceptively simple and the question was you know how do they actually encode the color information on this and the answer is they actually create diffraction gratings in the oil film tuned to each of the specific primary colors and they generate different gratings for each colour um, in the X and Y axis and also by modulating the beam focus which is just incredible. So let's just take a quick look through um, this document and the patents. I found various bits of information so I'm just going to go through the interesting thing bits in no particular order because a lot of this stuff I just don't understand because it gets into sort of fairly hit serious optics. But I'm sure you know there's people out there that know a lot more about this than I do so if you want to read through the papers you can probably get some more information but just yeah it's just mind-blowing that in the paints are dated from about 1966 that they actually you know, came out with this and actually made it all work um, so this this paper by William E Good uh, this is 1969 I think this is from the IEEE if you sort of do a search on that title you'll probably find it but say it, it is paywalled but say a lot of colleges have got access to it so you might be able to find it that way and this is sort of quite a good general summary incidentally William E Good also apparently created the first flying radio controlled model airplane in 1937 and was um, quite prolific in the world of um, radio controlled modeling um, he died in 2001 um, worked for General Electric for 28 years and interesting there's a mention here of Dr William E Glenn um, who suggested the actual the, yeah, the, the basic principle and if you do a patent search he's got dozens and dozens of patents in the whole uh, areas of optics projection right up to the DLP era there's all sorts of stuff in there yeah things like ultrasonic imaging and there's yeah there's loads and loads and loads of paint so there might be something interesting in there okay so this is the the bit where it describes what they're doing and so basically they're writing multiple diffraction gratings onto the surface of the oil and so they're splitting it down to um, primary colors and they they're writing the uh, the red and blue at right angles to the third green grating don't quite understand this bit we're saying it the green grating makes use of the natural grooves that are formed by the scanning of the beam which beam is the raster but they're basically modulating the spot focus for the green and then if we look at the uh, the rest of it the red and blue are writing different diffraction gratings at right angles to the uh, raster the red and blue signal is modulated modulating the speed of the um, deflection of the electron gun and so I don't quite understand how all this really works there is more detail in the patents but they're they're quite hard to uh, hard to read so from sort of apparently relatively simple those sort of very precise hardware they're they're managing to produce this sort of fairly full color modulation via a single um, oil film which is uh, pretty amazing and I'll send another paper from 1975 which discusses some of the improvements they made over the years there's a few sort of in interesting little snippets in here um, the cathode does use a thoriated tungsten um, cathode but they managed to get that to work um, the vacuum 10 to the minus 6 millimeters of mercury and they get a lifetime in the laboratory of over six and a half thousand hours and they're saying about three and a half thousand hours in the field and also they've managed to use some sort of funky techniques to improve the resolution again I don't really understand any of this stuff and they've improved the, um, the second generation projector called PJ5000 which now weighs 125 pounds versus 460 pounds of the uh, original so it's a lot more uh, easy to handle and there's also mentioned that they had 300 of the original projectors in the field so that gives you a sort of rough idea of the sort of size of the market obviously it's a very expensive piece of kit and the new version is sort of flexible there's plug-in modules that can use a black and white or color light valve and different video standards by the uh, use of different um, plug-in modules and there's something here from one of the main patents which delves even further into my non-understanding of all this stuff is that they're doing something weird with like beat frequencies between the different um, diffraction gratings and so this is just way beyond my uh, 
knowledge, but so there might be some people out there that uh, understand that and can actually uh, read through the patent and figure out um, exactly what's going on. And here's an image from the slightly later patent, 1969, which sort of gives us a sort of good overview. Uh, overview. Um, incidentally, those lenticular discs near the lamp, they're to do with changing the shape of the light source from the round source from the butt of the lamp to the sort of rectangular to fill the, um, the, light, the actual sort of light valve that's being scanned to get the best um, optical efficiency. Uh, apparently these, uh, the lamps were custom made, they're uh, 500 and I think later 650 watt um, Xenon arc lamps.